Hey friends, welcome to my new video and today I want to show you something that you ask me many times. I want to show you some Soviet places here in Moscow. Unfortunately, due to pandemic, some of them are still closed, but I'm gonna show you the most famous ones and I would say the most interesting ones. Walking around these places, visiting them inside, you feel this atmosphere of Soviet Union. You understand how it was in the past and you see this really interesting architecture. So. I hope you enjoyed this video and to be honest, some of these places I visited for the first time, shame of me, <laughs> but guys, let's go. To my mind, the most Soviet places here in Moscow are Stalin High Rises or how we call it in Russia, Seven Stalin Sisters. Stalin Sisters are a group of seven skyscrapers in Moscow that were built from 1947 to 1933 in a combination of Russian Baroque and Gothic styles. And worth noting that at the time of the constructions, they were the tallest buildings in Europe. The first building that you see is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that located on the Smolenskaya and Arbatskaya metro stations. In the second high-rise that I visited, there is a Hilton Hotel now. The building is located at the Komsomolska metro station. And by the way, all the addresses of the buildings will be written in the description of this video. A five-minute walk from that high-rise, there is the next Kaiskepa, a red gate building, in the side part of which there are different government offices, and on the sides you can find different apartments. The next high-rise is called Hotel Ukraina, but in fact there is now a Radisson Hotel. And probably one of the most beautiful residential buildings here in Moscow is the Stalin high-rise on the Kudrinska Square. Just look at these details, it's so amazing. One interesting fact about the Stalin skyscrapers is that the first bricks in the foundation of the buildings were laid on the day of 800th anniversary of Moscow. The buildings were supposed to show how powerful the Soviet Union and its people are. My favorite Stalin high rise is in Moscow State University, where we're right now. I think it's the most beautiful one. All this detail is just amazing, really impressive. And two years ago, I started wearing contacts, and oh my god, that just like now I'm walking around and I see all these details. The main building of the university is the tallest of the Stalin skyscrapers. The high rise on the Varabyov Gore was built as one of the most important architectural structures of the capital, and it's worth noting that the clocks on the tower are the largest in Europe. By the way, next to the Moscow State University, there is the most famous viewpoint, and there you can see some Stalin's high rises. And the last of the Stalin high rises is a residential building on the Katelinchiska embankment. Around the entire building, you can see the memorial tables of the famous people who lived there. In most cases, these are poets and artists. decided to go inside of this building and oh my god that's so beautiful Take a look. okay it was a fair because i just entered the building and immediately the people who work there just kick me out of there in quite rude way but it's okay i record a little bit so beautiful
By the way, there should have been another building, number eight, and it should be located uh, on the Kropotinska district, on the place where now there is a Chris Dusevi church. Actually, in that point, when they were preparing this palace of Soviets, they destroyed the church. Uh, there should have been a huge monument of Stalin on the top of it. It should have been the tallest building in that year. Uh, I think it, it should be around um, 420 meters. If I'm not making a mistake, this building should have been the main one, the most important one, and these seven sisters, it was like the idea that they surround this building. Um, when I saw the pictures in the internet, really, I was in shock. So fortunately, the, after the war, the idea was destroyed, and now there is a beautiful church in this place. And another Soviet place here in Moscow, actually located inside the building on the Katelinska embankment, and it's cinema called Elysion. It's one of the oldest cinemas here in Moscow, and if I understood everything correctly, uh, you can't see Hollywood movies there. It's mostly Russian artistic movies, and I think it's super interesting. Let's go inside. Walking around this movie theater, it's like you're transporting to the past. The amazing music, delicious smell of coffee, stunning interior. The atmosphere is amazing there. I understand that most shows are in Russian language and you won't understand them, but I truly advise you to take a coffee there and just enjoy the atmosphere. By the way, friends, if you want to support this channel, you can make a small donation by buying me a coffee. It will really help me. And for the ones who already did this, thank you so much, friends. I really, really appreciate this. It will really help this channel grow, and I hope to create more videos for you. The link in the description of this video, and let's continue. Now you and I on the Red Square, and here you can see another part of Soviet Union. <laughs> Actually, that's the Lenin's mausoleum. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I can't enter it and I think even though I will be able to enter it, I wouldn't be able to record the video there and to be honest, I've never been there, there is a Lenin body and I'm not a fan of such things, uh, but if you are interested in this, you can enter, I think it's free and after the pandemic is over, it's again going to be open. Not so far away from the Lenin's mausoleum, there is another really interesting place. I showed it outside one of my videos for you guys and you were interested to see this inside, so here we go. Our next place to visit is the Russian State Library. It's the largest library in Russia and the second largest in the world. And also interesting fact, it was called Lenin Russian Library, but 30 years ago the name was changed. Again, I've never been inside the I'm not really a fan of libraries and even when I was studying in university I think I've been in library once or twice, like super little times <laughs> and so to create, uh, to enter inside I could enter the main building without creating a special card uh, but the workers there told me that if I would like to see all the beautiful buildings there because there are different corpuses I should create it a card, it's free and I decided to do this <laughs> Creating this card to the library took just 5 minutes. I took a ticket to the queue but there were no people so I didn't need to wait. I filled out the paper with my data and then the lady took a picture of me for the card. It was free for me as I'm a Russian citizen and I asked uh, what about people from abroad and they say it's also for free, you just need to bring your visa or your passport and then they'll create this card that is valid for 5 years. Also in the entrance, they give you a paper that you need to fill out when you're going to leave. Honestly speaking, I have no idea where to go. I think I'm just gonna walk around to see a different kind of buildings here. And yeah, it's actually really nice to study with the view of the Kremlin.
Friends, I definitely think that this library is worth a visit because firstly it's free. It's really interesting just to walk around to see this architecture and the view is amazing. Also there is a cafe that you can take a coffee and just relax. So absolutely advice. So guys, now we're going to another place to the hotel called Sovetsky or in English Soviet Hotel. I heard a lot of good reviews about this place and I know there should be a really beautiful restaurant. Even though I'm not hungry, I think I will still go there. Uh, oops. <laughs> I hope they will let me record videos there. I'm not so sure about this, but let's see. I like this hotel since the first seconds. The interior is very beautiful and this place really conveys the atmosphere of, let's say, rich Soviet society. You can also see the portraits there of the famous people who stayed in the hotel. Really, I like everything there. So actually I'm quite surprised because I could enter the hotel without any problems. I'm walking around the floors now recording videos. No one tells me anything. And actually, I saw no one <laughs> when I entered there. Just few people on the reception and cleaning ladies, that's it. But the hotel, it looks really beautiful inside. I checked the prices for a night here. I think it was around 5,000 rubles. Uh, for a classic room and it looked beautiful so I can advise you this. An interesting fact that in the beginning in this place there was just a famous restaurant yard so loved by Russian aristocratic society and only years later the hotel appeared. The yard restaurant can be really considered as a part of the history. First of all, it was a place open to endless fun. The restaurant even developed a special menu with the prices for fun, for example, smearing a waiter's face with a dish costed 120 rubles and throwing a bottle in the mirror costed 100 rubles. The restaurant hall looked just impressive. I like it and the music so nice. Also every morning guests were shown a performance with a circus and acrobatic elements right inside the restaurant. I'm so surprised I could so easily walk there around to different floors to the restaurants and no one told me anything. It's such not a Russian style. <laughs> also in Soviet Union there were not so many cafes but a lot of let's say buffets. In Russia we call it stalove. And actually this is the one I showed you already in one of my videos and I wanted to go there again because it's like really brings the atmosphere there. It's super delicious there, not expensive, but the line is huge. And you know, with all this pandemic, I don't really want to stay there for so long. By the way, today it's Saturday and I'm recording video. And what can I say? The Moscow is just crazy. Like, there are so many people. Like, the pandemic never happened. And another Soviet place here in Moscow, it's a district called Ulitsa Tishitilsopiata Ogoda. Or how I can translate this? The street of 1905 year. And when you go out of the underground, you immediately see a huge monument that dedicated to the revolution that happened here at 1905. The monument was built in honor of the memory of the days of the December armed uprising of 1905. On the right, there is a worker and a girl in the fight with the policeman on the horse. In the center, there are revolutionary workers with the weapons and flags. On the left, there is a fallen revolutionary and a woman who raised her first in anger. Across the street of this monument, you can find the park. It's actually pretty nice just to walk around there, but also there are a few moments.
of course the monument of Lenin actually I think this park is looks much nicer in summer because now it's like the end of March everything is melting but yeah here we go and I think now we are going to walk a little bit around this district and I will show you The feat of the Presnitsky workers was not in vain. Their sacrifice weren't in vain. Lenin. In the park you can also find a small street library where you can take a book and in return put your own there. Now I'd like to show you some places in Moscow with atmosphere side union where you can try local food on budget. This place is called Chiburechne due to the Chiburek dish. It's located on the old Arbat street. Here I came to Chiburechna, it's super atmospheric place guys, I'm sure you will love it. The price like for the dinner, like for the lunch, it was quite cheap. For example, Chiburek, this like real Russian dish that I was gonna show you later cost just two dollars and juice also one dollar. So super cheap, really atmospheric, old Russian Soviet music, amazing. Chiburek is a fried dough with the filling. I took the one with the meat. It was really delicious lunch and now we are going to another place to have a dessert and also try Russian food. The second place is also located on the old Arbat street and it's called Varenichna due to the dish Vareniki. So here what happened, I came here a few hours ago but they said that the waiting time is quite long and I had some business to do in the city center so I had to leave and I wanted to take this Vareniki uh, with strawberry but now I'm hungry again and I don't want something sweet so I took with the mushrooms and potato, it should be really delicious so wait for it. Another place where you can feel the atmosphere of the Soviet Union actually is the Moscow Underground. I think each of you will agree with me that Moscow Metro is one of the most beautiful in the world. I think it's a must visit place. In each station you will see different design which often refers to the events that occurred in the Soviet Union. I actually made a video about this one year ago, take a look later. I also recorded already some places where you can feel the atmosphere of the Soviet Union, for example, the Wedenha Park. It can be said it's a Soviet park, all the buildings with the Soviet signs, and it's really atmospheric there as well. Also, after the reconstruction, it became super beautiful. Another place is a hidden district Kuryanova, where everything is remaining the same, and there you really feel the atmosphere of the Soviet Union. I also recently recorded a few unusual places of Moscow, for example, Most Film Studio, where it's like kind of Russian Hollywood, where we record the movies there. It was really interesting experience. And another place, it's a museum 
Museum of Soviet Arcade Machines. It was super amazing, super atmospheric. That's the most visit place when you're in Moscow. So friends, that's already the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching it at the very end. I hope it was interesting for you and you found yourself new to yourself. And personally, it was really interesting for me to record this video because I saw some new places. And yeah, there are so many ideas that, of the places that I want to show you more. So let's show Russia and all the world together.